Good afternoon. I'd like to thank each of the distinguished witnesses for being here. Just over a half century ago, President John F. Kennedy laid down a marker in my hometown of Houston, Texas, and made a commitment that like the great pioneers that came before us, we too would set sail on a new sea and send man to the moon. We embarked upon that endeavor as a nation because opening the vistas of space promised high costs and hardship and enormous reward. Today we find ourselves at a similar crossroad. The year 2015 is just as critical of a time for our national and commercial space programs as was the case a half century ago. Future exploration is certain to present hardships, but it also promises high rewards. New resources, frontiers, and economic opportunities. I am honored to serve as chairman of this subcommittee. And as the chairman, my first priority for the space component of the subcommittee will be working to help refocus NASA's energies on its core priorities of exploring space. We need to get back to the hard sciences, to man space exploration, and to the innovation that has been integral to the mission of NASA. We need to ensure that the United States remains a leader in space exploration in the 21st century. SLS and Orion will be critical to our medium and long-term ability to explore space. Whether it is the moon, Mars, or beyond. At the same time, I remain deeply concerned about our current inability to reach low Earth orbit. We are right now entirely dependent on the Russian Soyuz system, which is unacceptable from the perspective of space interests and also from the perspective of our national security. Every seat that an American astronaut occupies on the Russian Soyuz costs $70 million. It is imperative that America has the capability to get to the International Space Station without the assistance of the Russians. America should have the capability to launch a rescue mission to the space station should that prove necessary and without being dependent on the Russians. America should have the capacity to launch our critical satellites without needing to acquire Russian RD-180 engines. The commercial crew program is critical to restoring this capability. I'm encouraged by the progress, both with regard to commercial cargo and commercial crew, but we need a continued focus on accomplishing the stated objectives with maximum efficiency and expedition. It is terrific to see commercial companies innovating, and as chairman of this subcommittee, I will be an enthusiastic advocate of competition and the enabling of the private sector to compete and to innovate. In 2013, 81 orbital launches were conducted worldwide, 23 of which were commercial launches. Revenues from the 23 commercial orbital launches were estimated to be more than $1.9 billion. The United States accounted for six of these launches. There is more that can be done to create long-term predictability for the United States commercial space industry so that launch activity will continue to grow. There is no limit to human imagination or for the desire for exploration. Every one of us, every little boy, every little girl, every man and woman has looked up at the night sky and wondered what lies out there. That is the mystery, that is the vision behind America's space exploration. America has always led the way in space explora exploration, and we need to reclaim that leadership.